Good afternoon and welcome to Noonday Meditation and Contemplative Prayer Power Hour with me. I'm Martin Cowart and I'm so happy that you joined me today. It's always a pleasure. I mean, we're all working so hard sometimes to get through this pandemic and we need to do it together. We cannot do it alone. So stop. Stop and smell the roses. We've heard that so much that it's become a cliche. And that's too bad. And I think that's because we grew up in this very producer, consumer oriented culture where the goal in life which we unfortunately believe to be the pursuit of happiness is about producing more, consuming more, being more, making more, doing more, owning more, more and more and more. And you know what? It's never enough. It's like climbing a ladder to nowhere. It is climbing a ladder and we've all done it. And I just wonder if perhaps the divine mother has given us COVID-19, if you will, as a fiercely loving and protective slap to wake us up and stop and smell the roses. What's that saying? It's saying to stop and meditate. It's saying stop and experience and be grateful for what we've created together. In Genesis, it said in, on the sixth, on the seventh day, or the sixth day, on the final day, after He created everything, I forgot. Which, I think it was the seventh day. God, God stopped, and He said it was all good, and He rested, or she rested. She rested. She did all this creating of this wonderful planet, and then she decided to take a rest, to refuel her batteries. Now, where is this God? It's not, it's not some God that was back there in the time of Genesis. The God is right here, right now within you and me. And the invitation to stop and smell the roses is an invitation to stop and refuel the soul. We human beings are co-creators. We are energy generators. That's what the life force is. That, 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 that silent, that, that life force within us that we are created in the image of is an energy force, a creating, generating energy force. So we need to stop and plug into that to refuel ourselves with that enormous source of power. Because the old way of climbing and producing and trying to get more and trying to achieve more for myself is exhausting because we deplete all of our energy going nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. So again, I'm going to ask you, if you would, just type in your name and saying hello to me in the chat box so that I know you're here. It's always great to, to know when people have joined me um, to stop and smell the roses. Because what does that mean, stop and smell the roses? Stop and just experience the beauty and the magnificence of the creation we have created together. And that's what surrender is, too. Surrender is giving up my, uh, my egoic need to produce and consume, to take care of my own little individual needs, to plug into a higher force so that I can live a life of purpose and service for the betterment of others. And that is the pursuit of happiness. I'm afraid many of us, and I'm certainly one of them, have incorrectly, erroneously believed the pursuit of happiness is the pursuit of a successful career and pursuit of more things, more pleasure, more wonderful vacations, more material items. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that. But if that's your game, it's very lonely. 
It's very empty. Albert Schweitzer, who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1952, stated, he never met anyone that was truly happy who did not learn to serve others. And that's what I want, and I want to say that probably the most, the happiest and the most fulfilling time in my life was in the nine months following uh, the attack on the World Trade Center at 9-11. As some of you may or may not know, but I led the food operation there with one of our frequent guests, um, Mindy, who comes here frequently on uh, to join me on meditation. She was one of our food captains and she worked with me through the nine months. And I would say that community and, and, and serving those the people across the street with good food and other things that we did at St. Paul's Chapel was, a, was probably the most fulfilling and the most rewarding and the happiest I've ever been. Now, I'm not gonna tell you that it was it was happy in the sense of like, what in a party? But I'm gonna say, if you wanna know what, what a sense of deep found joy and sense of connection and love, that's what we created there. And that's the pursuit, that's, that's the nourishment of the soul. That was the expansion of my soul. And I'm just so grateful for that opportunity to serve during that time. And it changed my life, right now. And I think if we can take it, and the, here, here is, again, simple. We had one of the most horrific attacks in the United States by those planes running into the World Trade Center. From the, from, the, from the surface perspective, it was pretty horrific and horrible. And no doubt about it, it was painful. Our people we knew died, and it was, it was just horrible. I mean, it was painful. It was, it was, it was wounding. Um, and at the same time, in all that suffering, we came together to heal. We came together in love, and we fed our souls and all of that. And I'm just wondering if perhaps COVID-19 is another opportunity on a larger, on a more worldwide scale. But Mother Nature said, wake up, people. I don't want to, I don't want to equate the two because one was a human, a human, actual human attack on us. Uh, but I think that the, 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 whether it's a human attack or a natural disaster, the, the pain of death and the pain of loss and the fear is all is pretty much all the same. So, uh, but the thing is, I think we're probably, I wonder for me, and this is what I get from most of the spiritual people that I'm speaking with and talking with and listening to, is that we're in, we're in, we're in, we're in an awakening. We're in a very fast paced moment in the history of human evolution of moving us towards something a little bit more peaceful. A little more user friendly, a little more, a little more soul friendly, a little more soul enriching, and that's the invitation I have for you to join me in this power. That's why I call it a power hour because we plug into our power source and refuel ourselves in the middle of the day. You know, and we stopped. And we looked at what we did, and he said, it's good. It's good. Let's do more, let's do more good stuff. And allow that loving, creative force inside of us to quit resisting it, allow it to come forward and transform the world. That's what we're doing. We are transforming ourselves and the world to be a more loving or compassionate place where everyone can prosper. Over the weekend, I was part of a three-day online um, summit or conference, if you will, with a group called ClickFunnels. And at first, I thought ClickFunnels was just another sort of online marketing organization trying to sell me stuff. But once I dug under the surface and got closer to it, I realized it's a really wonderful, heart-centered uh, community of entrepreneurs who are who are just like many of you and me who have a message you have a product who have something they want to put out into the world to make it better and click funnels is a software that will allow us to do that it provides I mean, the, the, the creator of that uh, Russell Brunson is a marketing genius and his his he is starting from that place of he, he has learned how to get his message out and he wants to teach others. 
and it's really a wonderful organization. And I thought this is, and, it, and it's, 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 it's making infinite amounts of money. People are able to make infinite amounts of money from a place of creating wealth and not consuming wealth and producing wealth. It's creating wealth for an exchange of value. And I, and that's, that's the movement we're moving into. We're moving into creators of wealth instead of producers and consumers of wealth. We are creating wealth by exchange of value. Oh, good, isn't it? Pretty nice. And, and, so it's not, and that's the golden side of capitalism. Capitalism, it gets a bad rap because we've experienced so much of the negative, so much of the greed and the selfishness, the narcissistic, but like, but like everything, ourselves included, there is a golden side and a shadow side. And the golden side of, 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 the, of our capitalist system is it does provide for an opportunity of free markets to come together in exchange of goods and services for value and create wealth. That is the capitalist. That is the golden side of capitalism. There's also a shadow side, which creates greed and one up and all that producer consumer mentality. So we have a choice. We can either we can either stop and smell the roses and plug into the fuel, and we can we can use our resources to create a better world, or we can stay on the old path of producing and consuming and trying to keep this old kind of economic system that's so painful from imploding. I'm on the path. And I think you are too, or you wouldn't be here to stop and refuel the soul. Let's stop and refuel our souls right now. I'm gonna read a little bit from Richard Rohr's this morning. And then we will meditate for 20 minutes. We will really plug in. So uh, if you don't know, Richard Rohr is a Franciscan brother and a Roman Catholic priest, and he runs the Center for uh, Action and Contemplation in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And he puts out a daily meditation, which I find so helpful. And I've been using them as a resource for my meditations at noon here to, to power us up, to stop and smell the roses. The land is God's. Caring for the land every day is my way to be close to God. God's land must be honored. Eli, an Amish farmer. Poet, author, and farmer Wendell Berry is a shining example of humility and simple living. He's made it his life's concern to commit to one beloved plot of land in Kentucky. He says everything he's learned has been through his faithfulness to that commitment. He reminds me of St. Francis of Assisi and that he loves nature deeply and takes the gospel seriously. Barry writes with the profound pleasure that can come from simple things if we can attune ourselves to them. It's astonishing and, of course, discouraging to see economists now elevated to the position of ultimate justifier and explainer of all affairs of our daily life. And competition enshrined as the sovereign principle and ideal of economics. It's impossible not to notice how little the proponents of the ideal of competition have to say about honesty which is the fundamental economic virtue and how very little they have to say about community, compassion, and mutual help. Well, that's changing. That is changing. There are financial influences out there. Ray Dalio is one. Certainly Oprah Winfrey is another one. Uh, uh, Tony Robbins is a, bit, a great example. Uh, but there are, other, there, are, there are a lot of people. And, and recently the old... Um, the, the uh, chief economic advisor to Obama has re recently written a book called Economic Integrity or Economic Dignity, I believe it's called. So there is a world movement of some major financial influencers who are who are shifting that old story, if you will. We're all we're all part of that movement. For human beings. For human beings, affection is the ultimate motive because the force that powers us, as John Ruskin, 1819 to 1900, also said, is not steam, magnetism, 
or gravitation, but a soul. The force that powers us is our soul, is that life force within us, that connection to everything. Wow, isn't that wild? You and me, all of us have, have we have that, that's what we are. That's, it's not just we have it, that's what we are. But we've ignored it, unfortunately. And maybe Mother Nature's giving us COVID-19 to stop ignoring it and just tap into this magnificent gift called life we have and begin to honor it within ourselves and each other. Right? It feeds the soul, it fuels us. It gives us the energy we need. We are energy creators. We are. Is it possible to look beyond this all-consuming rush of winning and losing to be the possibility of countryside, a nation of countrysides in which use is not synonymous with defeat? It is. But in order to do so, I mean, just think about that. That's a, that's a, pretty, that's a pretty profound statement. Since we got here, we white people, we have done nothing but try to conquer, dominate, and control the land. It's not ours either. The land belongs to God. We'd have a lot to learn from Native, Native, Native Americans who are here long before us who knew how to love and respect the land. And I think that's what COVID-19 is teaching us. We need to learn to love and respect this, this, this Mother Earth. We're not here to conquer it. We're here, we're here as guests. We're here as guests. And we ought to act like good, respectable, and honest and loving guests. And let go of this notion of needing to control and dominate. It's too old and it's too painful. It's going to go. Because there's too many of us full of love and generosity and prosperity. We want to create a whole new world grounded in the truth. Somebody's going to finally say hello to me. There's my good friend Rohit. Hey, Rohit. Good to see you this morning. Glad you're here. Thank you so much for joining me. Always a pleasure to have you with us. Anybody else want to say hello? It's always nice for me to know who's here. Now back where I was reading. And I enjoy the interruption, so don't worry. I can always find my place again. It is, but in order to do so, we must consider our pleasures. There are pleasures that are free or without a permanent cost. These are the pleasures that we take in our own lives, our own wakefulness in this world and in the company of other people and other creatures. Pleasures innate in the creation and in our own good work. Wow. I have to say personally, I, I, I'm looking at my yard in the, in the gardens and the flowers are just magnificent this year. And I have really enjoyed myself because I'm kind of stuck at home, can't go many places. But one of the big values of that is that I've been able to really work in my yard, but I haven't really done that much more. I've just been able to pen, to stop and pay more attention to it. open my heart to the plants and flower and feel my way in and feel part of it. I can tell you this, when I'm creating a meal, for example, and I'm creating it from love and I begin to see the essence of all the different colors of all the vegetables, the, the red tomato and the green lettuce and the beautiful colored pepper. I mean, think, I mean our produce today for salads is absolutely gorgeous. And I'll find myself in the essence of the creation of that salad. And it just tastes wonderful. The whole, the whole, all the pleasure that surrounds it, the purchasing of the, of, of the vegetables and the, and the creation and the chopping and the cutting and the care. And then to be able to sit on my back porch at noon with my husband and just enjoy it. That's pleasure. That's real pleasure. And I didn't have to go out and get it or buy it or consume it. I got to just enjoy it. 
Simple. Simple. And I'm really grateful because not everybody, I guess, has the opportunity to go out and buy all those things. So I live in abundance and in prosperity. Hello, Darsu. Nice to see you today. Hello, hello. How are you? Nice to see you here. Glad you're here. Glad to have you part of us. Always a joy. These are the pleasures that we take in our own lives, our own wakefulness in this world, and in the company of other people and other creatures. Pleasures innate in the creation and in our own good work. You know, I gotta say, that's one thing that I really miss, and, I, and it, it's playing a little bit of a time. I'm a gregarious person. I like, I, I'm, I, I, I admit, I like human connection. I like to hug people. I miss that stuff. I miss hugging people. I miss just sitting out in the backyard and having a hamburger and being together with people. Um, and, and I guess maybe maybe the absence makes the heart go fonder. So I'm maybe recognizing as I'm not able to do that right now because of, of, of the physical distancing required to protect ourselves, that uh, I think that when we can get back to that again, we're going to appreciate a little bit more. We're going to appreciate each other a little more and, and be grateful for those simple pleasures of just Sacred moments. That's that's. The, I miss sacred space, sacred ritual. Having a meal with friends and family is sacred ritual. And I miss it. Maybe you do too. It is in these pleasures that we possess the likeness to God that is spoken of in Genesis. Yes, God looked upon all that God had created and saw that it was good. The passage suggests that our truest and most profound religious experience may be the simple unmasking pleasure in the existence of other creatures that is possible to humans. That is possible. See, the thing is, is we're the only creatures that is aware of our existence. We're aware of our birth. We're aware of our death as creatures. So we do have the choice the choice to stop and smell the roses. We can dance in that. It suggests that God's pleasure in all things must be respected by us in our use of things. Now, when he says it's suggested that God's pleasure in all, what, where is this God? Where is she? She's right here. We're not talking about some foreign thing. We're talking about us, us human beings, the God within us. So when we stop and smell the roses, we're reminded of our divine nature. And when we're reminded of our divine nature, we realize just how creative and powerful we truly are. And there is nothing we can't create if it's for the betterment of others and the service of a bigger community. There's nothing, because it's not really Martin doing it, or Dassault, or Rohit. It is that soul, that life living force within us, and we have become the vehicle that allows that doing to happen. We're no longer in resistance. We're surrendering our own personal need to get our way produce and consume our way to the top of nowhere so that we can participate, be part of a growing community of love, love, prosperity, joy, goodness, passion. It suggests too that we have an obligation to preserve God's pleasure in all these things, because it's 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 it, when we when we experience them, we we have a love for them, and like anything we have a love for, we want to protect it. I would imagine most of us have 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 woken to a real love and appreciation for this earth, and more and more people are going to become are becoming aware of just how abusive we've been. throwing plastic in the oceans and uh, all those kinds of things. And listen, Mother Nature has a way of cleaning herself up. 
and she's doing it right now. We have a choice. Stop and smell the roses or resist and continue to produce and consume and try to make the world ours. But I'm gonna go with I'm I'm gonna go with the uh, the uh, with the path of least resistance and I'm gonna jump in and join the powerful force of the universe within us to create something pretty fantastic. That's pretty exciting. Where is our comfort but in the free, uninvolved, finally mysterious beauty and grace of this world that we did not make that has no price? We mean we humans didn't make it. But the God within us is making it, making it right now. And she is happy with it. So happy with it, she's saying, you got to respect what we're doing here, people. Where is our sanity but there? Where is our pleasure but in working and res in resting kindly in the presence of this world? Where is our pleasure, our joy, our happiness, but in the working and resting kindly in the presence of this world? So let's smock and smell the roses. Let's meditate a little bit together and go from there. I'm going to set the timer for 20 minutes and off we're going to go. So please raise your arms up in the air if you can. Wiggle your feet, wiggle your toes, feel the energy, feel that wonderful life force within your body. Just hold this for a minute. Just lean back, allow your spine to support you a little bit, feel back into your spine, knowing the universe has your back. Just lean back, the universe has your back. She's got your back. She's here with us, the Divine Mother. We're not alone. We got each other. And the Divine Mother is with us. So raise your arms up and celebrate with gratitude and joy. Smell the roses. Smell the essence of life itself. Just close your eyes for a second and just feel the, feel the energy of the sky coming in through the crown of your head. And just breathe in the energy of God above. And now feel your feet, if you're not sitting in the chair, on the floor, grounded, the gravity, the Mother Earth, at just the right amount of weight. At just the right amount of weight. And then bring your hands down and put them over your heart. Put your hands on your heart and get still and listen and feel and experience your own beating heart. In some traditions that's known as the Axis Monday. Where the energies, the vertical energies and the horizontal energies come together. Horizontal energies being the energies of the material world and the vertical energies being the energies of the spiritual world. All of that comes together right here in our hearts. Hold that with joy and love. And let go of everything else. Let go of every thought, opinion, and judgment you might be having about me right now, yourself, and God. And just feel into the essence. Smell the roses. Experience the essence and the miracle of life itself in this moment. Because it is the only moment there is. Be in the now. Maybe take a stop and look around you and find something truly beautiful. Maybe it's a tree. Maybe it's a child. Maybe it's a little piece of ornamentation that you might have that you collected from the past. But just allow yourself to wander into the beauty of it. And be still. And be still and know that I am God, 
not me, Martin. I'm just a lowly human being who's willing and excited about surrendering everything I have to enjoy this wonderful life as your servant. To serve others, that is my only intention. Be of love and service to the universe, to each other and to God, the Divine Mother. Be still and know that I am not me. I am not me. I am not me. I am not me.
Welcome back. How was your journey? How was your adventure inside? You feel fueled? You're ready to go out and serve and make a difference in the world? If you have any comments, please put them in the chat. I'm always happy to hear from you. Always a pleasure. Wow, this was a powerful meditation for me today. I was really able to get deep inside myself. and um, It's great. So I'm really grateful for that. I'm grateful for the practice, and I'm grateful for you joining me. So stop and smell the roses. Or you can resist. You can fight, be angry, you're not getting your way, you gotta wear a mask, you can't go to work, you can't do what you normally do. That's, that's a choice. Or you can choose to surrender, let go, and let God, you say in the AA circles. Let go and let God. That's what's happening anyway. When you get to the point where you realize that you're not doing anything, it's being done through us. And that's what surrender is. That's the sweetness of life. Is that we can just lean back into love and allow God, allow her to co-create through us universe grounded in love, prosperity, and joy. Unconditional love. Unconditional acceptance. Infinite love. Infinite. Let's have the infinity. There's nothing. Infinity is infinity. We are we are infinity. Incarnate in a human body. That's pretty wild. That's exciting. So stop and smell the roses. May love and prosperity continue to prevail. Thank you. <laughs>